In thermodynamics, we're going to talk about work a lot. So what is work? Well, work is just the energy that's transferred by a system to its surroundings. Uh, so in thermo, we're going to say that if our work is greater than zero, then the work uh, is done Uh, by the system. Now, if the work is great, is uh, less than zero, so our work is less than zero, then the work is done uh, on uh, the system. So, uh, work done by the system. So, if we have our system right here, uh, work done by the system. Our work is going to be leaving the system. Our work is leaving the system. And if the work is done on the system, uh, the work is coming into the system. So I should also point out that work is not a property. And it's not a property because the amount of work that a system uh, that is performed by the system uh, is dependent on the process that it takes to go from state one to state two. So it's not a property. So for example, uh, if I have state one right here and state two right here, and this is on some PV graph. So this is just a graph that has pressure here, volume down here. Uh, the work is going to be the area under the curve. So depend, you can see right now, depending on how I go from point one to point two, the area under the curve is going to change. If, if for example, that's my process from one to two, then this entire area is the work that's performed. However, if the process from one to two it looks like this, then only this part is the work. It's dependent on the process, so therefore work cannot be a property of the system. Okay, so let's evaluate the work uh, of a closed system that is done on a piston cylinder assembly. So we have a pist uh, piston right here, we have a cylinder inside the piston, and what's happening is uh, the piston is going to move from point X1 to point X2. So first we define our closed system. This is going to be my closed system inside the piston cylinder assembly. As the cylinder is moving from point X2, the gas inside the closed system, because it's expanding, is going to be exerting this normal force onto the cylinder. And this force, uh, force is going to be equal to some pressure times the area. And the area is whatever the area of this cylinder is. So the work that's done by our system is going to be equal to the force times the change in distance. Now our force we said was our pressure times our area. So we have our pressure times our area times the change in uh, distance dx. And ADX, ADX right here, ADX is going to be equal to dV. So it's really our change in volume. So when we rewrite this expression right here, we're going to have the work done by the system is equal to uh, our pressure times dV. Now what we want to do is we want to integrate both sides and when we integrate both sides this is with respect to volume so we're going to go from V2 to V1 and we're uh, this side is going to be our work. So our work is going to be equal to uh, this equation that we see right here. If by chance the pressure is a constant, uh, so you might see this in your classes, uh, the professors like to show you this equation, but it only occurs if the pressure is constant. If the pressure is constant, it can come outside of this integral. If it comes outside of this integral, so first let's put the disclaimer, if P is constant, 
So if the pressure is constant, the integral or this equation becomes our work is equal to P times V2 V1 delta V. So this pressure is constant, it can come outside of the integral. Only then can we say that this is equal to, let me move this down a little bit, this is equal to P times V2 minus V1. So this equation, which is really nice, and I know as undergrads and everything, you always go to this equation, but this is only good if the pressure is constant. If the pressure is not constant, uh, you have to work from this equation right here. Now before I go over another numerical example, I just want to uh, define what a polytropic process relation is. So a polytropic process is a type of uh, quasi-equilibrium process and it's given by the equation P V to the N is equal to a constant. Or in, if you do it with specific volumes you have P times a small V to the N is equal to a constant. And if N is equal to zero then it's constant pressure. And you get constant pressure because you would have uh, P V to the zero is equal to constant. And we know uh, V to the zero is just going to be equal to one. So we have P is equal to uh, constant. If uh, N is equal to plus or minus infinity, then it's a constant volume. And if it, n is equal to 1, it's constant uh, temperature. So when we're going between two states, if we're going between uh, state 1 and a state 2, then we're going to have P1 V1 uh, to the n is equal to P2 uh, V2 to the n. And uh, we're going to use these relationships in the example that I'm going to go over right now. So in this example, um, we're going to have a uh, gas in a piston cylinder assembly that is expanding. And it's expanding with the relationship PV to the n is equal to a constant. Uh, initially, our pressure is at three bars right here. So three bars, here's state one. Uh, and our volume is at 0.1 uh, meters cubed. And our final volume is going to be at 0.2 meters cubed. And so we have to determine uh, what our work is. Uh, and we want to determine what the work is if n is equal to 1.5, if n is equal to 1, and if n is equal to 0. So again, the work the amount of work that's done is going to depend on the uh, the process that it takes to get from uh, point one to point two. So we know if it's equal to zero right here, it's going to go across the top. We know that if it's equal to one, it's going to be down here somewhere. And if it's equal to 1.5, it's going to be down here. So these are the three processes. And you can see again that the area under the curve is going to change depending on where, uh, what the pressure is at, at our final state. So the first thing we want to do, let's look at n is equal to 1.5. Uh, let's determine what the pressure, uh, I'm sorry, 1.5. Let's determine what the pressure is at this second state. So in order to do that, we said that the, uh, the process, polytropic process between two states is going to be P1 uh, V1 to the N is equal to P2 V2 uh, to the N. Now we're given a lot of this information. We're given P1. P1 is equal to 3. V1 is equal to 0.1. 
and n is equal to 1.5. And again, P2 is going to be equal to, uh, that's what we're solving for, so P2, V2 is going to be equal to 0.2, and n is going to be equal to 1.5. So when we do this calculation, we're gonna get this is equal to uh, P2 is equal to 1.06 bars. So this tells us right here uh, with n is equal oops with n is equal to uh, 1.5 our p2 is going to be equal to 1.06. All right so now that we know the pressure at state 2 we can use the equation we had earlier which is work is equal to the integral from v2 to v1 of uh, p dv. Now this p right here, we can substitute with this relation. Since it expands with this relationship right here, we know that p, p is going to be equal to c over v to the n. And c over v to the n, is, uh, c is a constant, v to the n is the volume to uh, this n right here. Now, because a const because c is a constant, when we put it into this integral, we can take it outside of the integral. So when we rewrite this, we have our work is equal to uh, c times the integral of v2 to v1 times v uh, 1 over 1 over v to the n. We know that 1 over v to the n is really equal to uh, n to the minus 1. So we have c times the integral of v2 to v1 times v to the minus n dv. And we can uh, take the integral now. Uh, because the exponent is n minus n, we need to add 1 and divide by that minus n plus 1. So we get our work is equal to um, c times v to the minus n plus 1 over minus n plus 1. And this is going to be evaluated from v2 to v1. So v2, v1. When we, um, when we evaluate it from v2 to v1 and we multiply by c, we're going to have this is equal to uh, C times V2, 1 uh, minus N. I'm just rearranging uh, this exponent because I don't like a minus sign up front. Uh, and then minus C, V1, 1 minus N over 1 minus N. Now with the C right here, we can resubstitute this P. So we know that P1, V1 to the N is equal to C. And we know that P2, V2 to the N is equal to C because they're equal to each other right here. So this one right here is going to be equal to P, uh, P2, V2 to the N times V2 to the 1 minus N. And this is going to be minus P1 v1 to the n times v1 to the uh yeah 1 minus n over 1 minus n now this is going to simplify a little bit if you do a little bit of algebra right here we know that v2 to the 1 minus n so v2 to the 1 minus n is really equal to uh v2 over v to the n, it's an exponential rule. So when we have this, and this is equal, so I'll rewrite it, so we have p2 times v2 to the n times uh, v2 to v2 to the n, these two n's are gonna cancel, so what we have left 
is it's going to cancel on this P1 side too. So what we're going to have left is uh, P2 V2 minus P1 V1 over 1 minus N. And this is going to be what our work is equal to. We know P2 is equal to 1.06 bar. Uh, V2 is equal to 0.2 meters cubed minus P1 is going to be uh, 3 bar and V1 is going to be this 0.1 uh, and this 0.1 meters cubed. Then we're going to divide by 1 minus n which is 1.5 so this is going to be equal to 0.176 uh, bars times meter cubed. Now, bars times meters cubed is not really a good uh, unit, so we're going to have to convert to kilojoules. Uh, the conversion factor we're going to use is um, right here. So 0.1, uh, hope this doesn't go off the screen. So 0.176 bars times meters cubed uh, is going to be times 10 to the fifth uh, newtons over meters squared, uh, which is equal to one bar. So right there, the bars go away and then we're also going to say one uh, kilojoule is equal to uh, is equal to ten to the third uh, newton times meters. I sorry if that got cut off, but what happens is here's two meters right here. Here's another meter right here. So there's the meters go away. And this Newton right here goes away with that Newton. So we're left with uh, kilojoules. So what's left is this 10 to the third goes away. This 10 to the fifth turns into a 10, uh, 10 squared. So we're multiplying this by 100. So we're going to get this is equal to uh, 17.6 uh, kilojoules. So th this is a, a conversion factor that uh, you're going to use a lot. Um, to convert this, uh, to convert these type of problems to kilojoules. So it, uh, just to rewrite it, it's 10 to the fifth uh, newtons over meters squared. D it t divided by one bar. Times one kilojoule over 10 to the third newton uh, meters. So this converts these bars in meters squared to uh, kilojoules. So I think I'm running a little long on time, so I'm not gonna do uh, these two steps right here uh, when n is equal to one and n is equal to zero. Um, but they fall, uh, when n is equal to one, it follows the same steps, except when you get to the integral, you're gonna have to deal with a natural log. Uh, and when n is equal to zero, uh, n is equal to zero, that means your pressure is uh, constant. So when your pressure is constant, you can just use the, um, the work is equal to P times V2 uh, minus V1 because the pressure is constant.